Hello, welcome back to Bebop Review. Here we are again, back with Simon Webb, the Lord Ha Ha of YouTube. Uh, in this video, which is entitled Why Black People Seem Unable to Write Books on Any Subject Other Than That of Being Black, he actually states that basically black people are basically thick. They can't write books on subjects that are not about black people. Uh, he starts off, he shows you this book here, Don't Touch My Hair with This Black Person. Uh, and saying, you know, why is she writing the book about blacks, you know, which is a little bit silly because then he starts saying why in later later on in this video He starts saying why don't they write about Jane Austen? Well, let's just have a look at these writers that he's on about Jane Austen What did she ever write about? I said white middle-class people Pride and Prejudice, Emma, although it's all about white You know white middle-class people in England, you know, she didn't write about physics or science or anything Charles Dickens, what did he write about? He wrote about the working class, you know, the poor working class. All his, his books are basically the same thing, you know, David Copfield, Oliver, Oliver Twist, they're all the same. They, they're about poor working class people in England. I'm not saying they're rubbish books, they're fantastic books. I mean, these are the greatest writers in British uh, literature, you know what I mean? And it's the way they write that brings it out, not really the subject matter. Uh, Thomas Hardy, Tess, far, far from the maddening crowd, very similar type stories based in England again. Uh, you know, the Bronte sisters, they wrote about basically where they come from, Yorkshire, you know, just up the road from where I live here. So uh, it's a bit silly saying that black people shouldn't be writing about their experiences as black people because white people do exactly the same. Right, later on, I'll just move this video forward a bit. And then he shows you this book, QED by Richard Farm Feynman. It's basically QED, which means quantum electrodynamics. It's basically quantum physics, right? Now, he's, he's actually showing you this book and, and making out as though it's like some kind of a novel or a, you know, a book on science. Where really, all it is is it's a series of lectures that were put into book form, which Feynman actually gave. But I'll tell you what made me laugh about this, because I've actually got this book as well. I'll just show you what, what made me laugh about this book when, when he's showing you this book. Okay, so this is out of Richard Feynman's book, QED. This is an introduction, on page 11. He says, The Maya Indians were interested in the rising and setting of Venus as a morning star and an evening star. They were very interested in when it would appear. After some years of observation, they noticed that five cycles of Venus were very nearly equal to eight of their nominal years of 365 days. They were aware that the true year of seasons was different and they made calculations of that also. To make calculations, the Maya had invented a system of bars and dots to represent numbers, including zero. Right? Now, just look at that, including zero. Now, if you look at that, including zero, in a previous video, Simon Webb actually knocked the... Uh, South American civilizations and saying that they weren't civilizations because they hadn't invented wheel. Well, look at that. They'd actually invented zero. The, the British never invented zero, and all the Northern Europeans didn't invent zero. That We get our uh, numerical system of zero from the Arabs. That's where we come from in this country. So I just want to show you that. that he's not actually reading the books he's putting across to us. If he'd have read that and seen that including zero, he'd have, he would have probably thought that's something really big, and he wouldn't have knocked the South American civilizations in a previous video. So he, he, he's an idiot. He do not know what he's talking about, this guy. Let's carry on. And then he shows this other book by Mikio Kaku. I don't like this guy, Kaku. I've seen, seen, I've got some of his books. I just don't like how he writes. Basically, these books we've just shown you are really just put out for the general public. They're not true science books. I'll just show you a bit at the beginning of this book by Mikio Kaku. Right? It's called Physics of the Impossible. If you look at the very first page of Physics of the Impossible. He talks about force fields and he's talking about starships. Shields up in countless Star Trek episodes. This is the first order that Captain Cork box out to the crew, raising the force fields to take the starship Enterprise against. And basically, he's talking about fields of force and he goes into Faraday and Davy and all this kind of stuff. But it's, it's not really a book written for scientists, this. It's a book written for the general public, just as a... It's like just putting out, it's like Pulp Fiction just putting stuff out, really. A true science book, I'll show you what a true science book looks like. This is what a true science book looks like. This is this is a textbook, the engineering textbook. This is on thermodynamics. But you can see there's lots of maths and stuff. 
Do you know what I mean? That's that's a true. If you want to learn about thermodynamics, this is what you've got. If you end up getting maths, you know what I mean. It's not just like a, a novel what you write reading. You know, real science books have maths in and stuff. You know what I mean? They, they're geared towards other other scientists or engineers or whatever. You know. So when he's showing you these books, I'm just not impressed at all because basically they're just written for the general public. I mean, he's not going to learn quantum physics by reading books like that. If he wants to learn quantum physics, he ought to do a, a course in mathematics, you know, get up to A-level mathematics at least and then start working from there, you know. Right, then he goes on to talk about uh, the prejudice that these two guys, actually, you know, Feynman and Keiko, actually experienced, you know. Keiko would be Japanese, he was put in a prison camp in the Second World War, and also uh, Feynman was prejudiced against because he was a Jew and he couldn't go to Columbia University, and he says he had to study physics at, at Princeton. Whereas, actually, Feynman studied physics at MIT and he did his PhD at Princeton. So, just correct that bit a little bit. Uh, and I just, just, just disagree with what he's saying. He's saying that is much worse... You know they've uh, they've experienced this kind of prejudice, and that is so much worse than black people. I mean, if you think about black people in America, just just go on to Google now if you're watching this on computer, and just put lynchings in America, and you'll come up with lo literally hundreds of photographs of black people being lynched, burned at stake, and all sorts. I mean, you can't compare. I know Jews have really suffered, right, in history, right? There's been programs against Jews throughout Europe, you know, no no problem accepting that. And the Nazis, you know, for a period of, you know, what was 10, 12 years, actually uh, was prejudiced against Jews and actually started murdering Jews, you know, in the Second World War, murdered Jews. No question about that. But he's making out as though Jews never moan about the fact that they've all been... You know, exterminating that, which is completely untrue. Not so long ago in Sheffield, we had something called an Anne Frank exhibition. It was at the Graves Art Gallery, and I went there, and it was it was just all about how Jews are being treated through history, basically the Second World War, and it was showing you, it's showing you how many Jews who tried to escape from Germany during the Nazi persecution were turned away, turned away from America, turned away from other European countries, you know, they couldn't get into the other European countries, you know, and people like him would have been the ones who said, we're not having these Jews here, he is the type of person who would have stopped them escaping, you know, I mean, he's against all these immigrants which are coming from countries that are so bloody awful, you know what I mean, they treat the people so awful, they're just trying to get away, you know. So I, I just, it just gets up my back. If you look at the whole history of black people in America, even in music, the, su the subject that I put a lot of videos on, in music, if you look at the Jews, right, who was the two famous Jews in, in jazz music, right, in 1930s, 40s? Artie Shaw and Benny Goodman, right? Both big band leaders, both very famous, both made a hell of a lot of money, right? Now, if you compare that to somebody like Jewel Kellington, who everybody says is the greatest American composer, Ellington, when he went on tour, he couldn't go into any hotel he wanted to. He had to sleep in a railway car. He had to hire himself a Pullman, a, a Pullman railway car to sleep at night. Artie Shaw and Bernie Goodman never had that problem, right? Never had racial prejudice. I mean, if they'd have gone into a bar, you know, as black people, or any, into a hotel that was solely segregated for whites, they'd have probably been killed, you know what I mean? We're really talking about getting killed by doing things wrong. So I'd certainly disagree with him that Jews and, and Japanese were treated uh, just as bad as blacks because they were not. They were not. It was a short period for the Japanese, just in the war, were treated quite bad. And Jews have never been treated in America, never treated as bad. They've certainly had prejudice against them, but never as bad as the blacks. I mean, the blacks, like I say, you've just got to look. You've got to just play, type in lynchings in America, and you'll just see loads and loads of black people strung up for no reason, a lot of them, a lot of times, simply for talking back to black people. I mean, look at that kid, that, what is it called, that Till, Eddie Till, what they called him? who were beaten up by these two white guys just for whistling at a black woman. You know, just crazy. One of the things he says is that you won't get black people writing on anything other than race. The fact is, he doesn't know what they're writing. He doesn't know what they're writing because he just he hasn't got the knowledge. 
I mean, I have actually, just look at my videos. I've actually done a complete series on one book by a black person, one of the most important books in music history in America, called The Lydian Chromatic Concert, which was uh, written by George Russell. Now, that's a book that is not really that well known. That's why I put those series of videos on. Right, George Russell invented something called chord scale theory. Chord scale theory now perpetrates all America. It's, it's in every college you go to when you're learning some kind of jazz or improvised music, you will come across chord scale theory. Yet, George Russell's name is never acknowledged as the inventor of chord scale theory, even though he did it. He, he was the one who did it. No doubt about it. He was the first one who came out with chord scale theory. And absolutely nobody... Absolutely nobody has actually accepted it. They don't write it. I mean, if you look at any Berkeley books uh, and see Chord Scale, which was done by Barry Nettles, he did the, the Berkeley uh, books on Chord Scale Theory. He doesn't acknowledge that George Russell was the guy who came out with it first. So a lot of black people want to put this across, that, you know, George Russell is the guy who invented Chord Scale Theory and he's been wiped out of history, you know. In fact, George Russell became... There was so much prejudiced against the leading chromatic concert when it came out that he couldn't find work in america right and he actually had to go to sweden he, he was a, a swedish uh, university actually invited him there he went to work there for quite a while so and when he when he came back it was i think it was the new england conservatory who actually set him up uh, and he taught the leading chromatic concert but even today only new england conservatory and indiana university teach the leading chromatic concept Whereas code scale theories taught all of America, but they, like I said, they don't they don't acknowledge George Russell. Now I'll give you another example, which surprised me as well. Uh, when I was younger and I was really getting into jazz, I read a book by Ross Russell called Bird Lives. Now Ross Russell is a white guy who was the manager of Charlie Parker, and he wrote this. It was the first book ever written on the great alto saxophonist Charlie Parker. In that book, Russell really slags off Charlie Parker. And he's, in, in one instance, uh, Russell sat at a table in Birdland and Charlie Parker comes over and starts arguing because Russell released this record called Lover Man with Charlie Parker was having a breakdown. He was really angry. And he, he threatened, he, he, he left the table and told one of the waiters to tell Russell that he was going to shoot him with a gun if he didn't leave. So Russell left. But it wasn't, well, years later until black writers started coming into you know, people like Stanley Crouch started coming into writing about black people. That I found out that George, Ru uh, that Ross Russell, right, never paid Charlie Parker one cent for the recordings that he did for him. You remember, he was uh, running Dial Record Company, right, and he put for two years. Charlie Parker was producing records for Dial, and he never paid one cent in royalties. I mean, that is terrible, and he got away with it as well. So, I mean, you can understand why Charlie Parker is really angry with Ross Russell. But Ross, Russell doesn't say that in the book. In Bird Lives, you won't see that written in, in Bird Lives. He's putting across his own, you know, his own agenda, you know. OK, so back to this guy. So let's have a look. Uh, I've just given you one, which is the leading chromatic concept. That is a book. That, there's not one word of race in that book. It's all music theory. David Baker, also a writer... In music, who's produced many, many books. Uh, he must have produced at least 20 books. Some on jazz monograms, different people, and uh, theory books and stuff. You know, it's, it's, So he's, he's another big publisher. Uh, again, not one word of race in them books. It's just all theory. Uh, so I look at the internet. I'm not, I, I, I don't know as much about other subjects, but I had a quick look and I thought, well, there's, there's still quite a lot of writing. If you look at this, these are like all black architects different there's one i really like down here one building these are all black architects think thing about these is people like architects and that they don't actually write books about architecture that's mainly college professors who do that what they do is they, they write papers a lot of people write this one this is one i like this one by norman merrick skilarek that is a lovely building that I really like that that's that's very like modern art isn't it I mean, that was built in the 1970s. It's fantastic. You know something? Where I live in Sheffield in England, we've got nothing like that in this in uh, in Sheffield. I mean, that's that's just a fantastic building. It was built in the 1970s. It's called the Pacific Design Centre. It's in Los Angeles. 
It's a fantastic building that. So you know what I mean? A lot a lot of these people like these, they'll write papers on architecture, but they don't write books. I mean, that's the big thing. I mean Einstein never actually wrote a book on you know, on the relativity. Other people have written books on relativity, but Einstein didn't. He was just writing papers and he wrote lots and lots of papers. Let me just show you another one on with some physicists. Right, these are some black uh, scientists. Dr. Sh Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. She's, I think she's the woman who was in, uh, in the film Hidden Figures. If you've seen the film Hidden Figures, very good film. She actually uh, was the woman who, who was working at NASA. Uh, this is interesting, this young uh, scientist here. If you look there, look, it says uh, she's into, this is, she's a robotics engineer. If you look there, it says she's wrote 250 peer-reviewed publications. Various um, t academic journals and conference proceedings. So they do write. They write quite a lot, black people, but they, they don't write books for the general public. They write in papers all the time. And if you get people who are working in physics and metrology and and uh, architecture and all those things that I've done, if you look, you'll see the black people are actually involved in everything. But, uh, you know, they, they write papers more than books. You know what I mean? They, they, People who write books, or, pe or my books on engineering, are written by people who are professors at university, right? And then they've got the time to write them. I think you've got to have a bit of an art to write a book on physics, to try and get it across. And there's certain people who are very good at it. And what they do is, if you go to university, if you went into a university bookshop and had a look, what you see is a book that's been around for like 30 years, but it'll say like 10th edition or 12th edition, you know, things like that. And it means it's been updated by from modern technology. I know uh, some of the engineering books I have got are, are really low. They're like sixth edition because that we you know I studied engineering like 40, 40 odd years ago. So and now you'll see like thirteenth edition and stuff like that. You know because they've been updated with modern, uh, modern technology. Our modern technology has gone on. So you know I mean it, it's just to say there's no black scientists who are writing stuff. He's just talking rubbish. He's just a racist. He's just what he's trying to do is he's just trying to say that black people are different to white people and therefore we should treat them differently. And it's just mad. And he's saying that it's built into their own. You know I mean it's it's, it's racism because he's saying it's not it's not external influences that are causing any problems with black people, right? He's saying that it's something in themselves, i.e. they're different to white people, different that much that the, uh, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. Yeah, I tell you, say, you've only, you've only got to look in music, jazz music. There was only one third the black people in music as there were the white people, right? There was a hell of a lot more white people in, in uh, jazz music in the 1930s, 40s, 50s and that. Yet black people dominate completely. So I've I've just uh, showed you that black people do write stuff. It's mainly papers. Uh, you might get some books like *Lydian Chromatic Concept*, which I've just talked about. I think is I know about that because I'm into music, you see. But he he obviously doesn't know these things because he's not into that that kind of stuff. But like I said, in, in music, I can tell you straight away that there's *Lydian Chromatic Concept*, which is by George Russell, which is a very famous book, and David Baker. These are these are some of the most prolific writers in music in jazz music. Well, leading chromatic concepts not really jazz. It's it's just music theory, and then, like I said, there's no racism at all in those. He's saying that the black people are trapped in the past. Well, I would say that he's trapped in the past. He's like a flipping Nazi. He's trapped in the 1930s. This guy. I mean, he's it probably one of his f favorite books is uh, Madison Grant. You know, the passing of the great race. That's probably his favorite book. And he's saying that one of the things he says is that. Uh, Black people are unable to write about anything except black people. Like I've said before, you know, white people always wrote about white people. You know, Jane Austen, all these, wrote about what was in their basic vicinity. And black people do the same. Now, you've got to say, why am I making this video? I'm not even black. And this guy gets up my back so much, I've got to produce a video against him. You know what I mean? I'm not even black. So you can understand why black people re write books on black people and, and experiences of racism and stuff. Okay, I think I've said enough here because this video will just go on and on and on. Basically, I think that people who watch, the, not people who watch these videos, but people who mark him up 
are all racist. I think they're all racist, and I also think they're all morons. I don't think they can actually look and find information for themselves and find out that he's just not telling the truth. He's got an agenda, basically. He wants to keep Britain white and keep all these blacks out and keep all these foreigners out. You know what I mean? Whereas actually Britain's been built on foreign. You've only got to look at people like Isambard Kingdom Brunel, who's father mark brunel was uh, a foreign input to this import to this country basically was escaping the french revolution uh so you know what i mean and he turned out to be britain's greatest engineer uh brunel in about kingdom brunel so he, i mean it's just silly you know what i mean all the all the uh canals were built by irish navvies you know what i mean coming over from ireland I'll see you in another video. I'll carry on. I keep getting his videos in my inbox. I don't go looking for them. They just come out. I don't know why. I must have actually looked at something, and then this has been recommended to me. But uh, while he's making them, I'll keep making videos against him. You know, we aren't putting too much work in.